right, you can be seated, and uh, we are glad you are here. So um, we have, uh, since we have uh, are stopping the 830 service until the end of summer, um, I am back to teaching, although Zach is doing a really good job. Um, we expect to uh, add the, go back to this, the 830 service after summer is over. We have, even today, a good amount of people traveling and things. And uh, so, um, uh, but, uh, but then we'll, we'll be, at, Lord willing, we hope we're out of room again uh, coming uh, at the end of summer. And hopefully we're out of room this morning. That's always good. We'll figure it out. And I'm curious, I've been in, uh, we'll be in Joshua uh, chapter 11, by the way. I've been in services a million times uh, around the world where people are standing, looking through the doors and windows. There's no doors and windows, but that's where they are. Um, they're standing there watching the service. And I'm wondering if we overflow, if Americans will do that. And I'm thinking, probably not. Um, they'll probably go home and, and uh, but uh, maybe the people of Endor might. They're pretty dedicated. But uh, yeah, we want to be uh, full. God wants his house filled in Luke 14. But Joshua and uh, chapter, uh, let's see, um, we're going to go chapter 11. And uh, we're going to hit verse uh, 23. Uh, Let's see, 15 we'll start there, and uh, we're going to go through the end of the chapter. We're talking about the book of Joshua. We're, we've got one more lesson after this, and uh, but we're talking about settling in Canaan. And, uh, and so let's, uh, I'll go ahead and read the passage there, and we'll get into it. And uh, it says, And the Lord commanded Moses, his servant, uh, as the Lord commanded Moses, his servant, um, uh, so did Moses command Joshua. And so did and and so did Joshua. He left nothing undone that the Lord had commanded Moses. So Joshua uh, took all the land and hills and all the south country and all the land of, the, of Goshen and the valley and the plain and the mountains of Israel and the valley of the same, um, even uh, 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 from the mountain Halak that goeth um, up to Seir even unto uh, Baal Gad in the valley of Lebanon, uh, under uh, uh, Mount Hebron, uh, uh, Hermon, uh, and all their kings he took, and smote them, and slew them. Joshua made war a long time with all those kings. And there was not a city that made peace with the children of Israel, save the Hivite, Hivites, the inhabitants of Gibeon, and the others, the uh, and all others they took in battle. And we'll get to that and explain uh, why and, and explain what they didn't do. And I, there's a lot in here. you got to read the whole rest of the book really to understand exactly what happened. And, and it was of the Lord um, to harden their hearts that they should come against uh, the children of Is, uh, against Israel to battle, uh, that he might destroy them utterly, that they might uh, have no favor. Um, but that he might destroy them as the Lord commanded uh, Moses. And all that, uh, and, and at that time came Joshua uh, and cut off the inhabitants of the mountains uh, from Hermon, even unto Dehir, from all these other places. It's going to just list uh, where they all are. There was none uh, left of the Anakins. Um, none of the Anakins left, verse uh, 22, of the land of the children of Israel. Only uh, in uh, Gaza and Gath and uh, Ashdod uh, there remain. So Joshua took the whole land according to all that the Lord said unto Moses, and Joshua uh, gave it for an inheritance uh, unto Israel according to um, their divisions by their tribes, and the land rested from war. All right, let's go ahead and pray. Lord, thank you for this This. Uh, this lesson, Lord, as we can learn some lessons from the book of Joshua, and I pray that your Holy Spirit would teach us today. Lord, uh, we have land to gain and uh, giants to conquer, and, and I pray that you would guide us in this and uh, teach us, uh, Lord, first of all, just what the Bible says, and secondly, how to apply it to our lives. We pray for the Holy Spirit to move and uh, to help us and teach us during this time. Thank you for the Bible and all that it gives us. Give uh, us uh, victory and rest and uh, until you come, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, some things here. Last week we learned um, just some uh, uh, good things and bad things that uh, Israel had done and Joshua had done. Uh, the Lord brought them the great victory after Ai. 
Um, they destroyed AI. Um, they had the problem with Gibeon um, because they get the children of Gibeon came and deceived them. And they didn't pray about it. They asked not counsel of the mouth of the Lord. We want to remember to always pray about things and seek God's wisdom because God knows things uh, that we don't discern and cannot see. Then after the victory uh, of Ai and Jericho, they took time. And they took time. Remember, remember what they did when they took time there? They stopped for a minute and they did a couple things. Anybody remember either thing that they did? Rick? Built an altar. Built an altar. Good. All right. Anybody else remember anything they did? Yep. Uh, yeah, he made a copy of the law. That's right. And then they read the law to every single person, every word of it, to the whole nation. They just stopped. And uh, would to God we would just take time when God's done a work, just to stop, sacrifice, uh, remember God, uh, and uh, and take time for his word. And they did that. And uh, then they needed to be courageous, kept using that word again all throughout the book of Joshua, and trust the Lord uh, for the victory and uh, to finish the job uh, that they are given. So now they've made it into land. Now they've conquered um, Jericho and Ai. Now they're in the land. Now they're there, and uh, now it's time to go. And the whole land's before them. God's already worked. God's already prepared the way. God's already uh, 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 weakened the enemies and put the fear before them. And, uh, and now, now it's their time, and they are battling. Um, and uh, so the first thing I want to note here is Israel... Um, finishes conquering the land and most of their enemies. Uh, let's look at, uh, um, we read it already, but verse, uh, uh, let's see, um, verse 15 is a, uh, is a good verse there. It says, and as Lord commanded uh, uh, Moses his servant, so did he command, uh, so Moses commanded Joshua, and so did Joshua. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord commanded Joshua. And then the last verse in verse 23, And Joshua took the whole land, according to all that the Lord had said unto Moses. And Joshua um, gave, uh, gave it for an inheritance uh, unto Israel, according to their divisions by their tribes, and the land rested from war. So they went and they, they pretty much conquered it. But if you go to chapter 21, we see it a little farther, because a big section of pa- uh, passage here um, where they, they, they conquer and, uh, and get... Uh, all the way through all these things. And uh, chapter 21, and uh, we see in verse um, 43, And the Lord gave unto Israel all the land which he sware to give unto their fathers, and they possessed it, and dwelt there, and the Lord gave them um, rest round about according to all that he sware unto their fathers, that there stood not a man of all, all their enemies before them. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hand, um, and there failed uh, not aught of any good thing which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel. Uh, All came to pass. This is a long-going promise. This is from Abraham. He had Abraham, then he had Isaac, then he had Jacob, and then he had, you know, of course, he had the slavery for 400 years. He had the the, them coming out of e- Egypt, they had the 40 years of wandering, and now they're in, and then they, eventually they conquered uh, and, and went throughout the land and got the victory, and uh, and they got most of the country. Now, there's going to be some strongholds. There's going to be some things they don't do. We're going to read that. It's going to be really important. But basically, they they inhabit the land, okay? And 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 now, if you follow in in the history of warfare is just a, a lot of wars you could follow. Is sometimes you go in and you 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 conquer a country, a region, but you don't really stomp out all the rebellion things. Um, Haiti was like that, for example. Uh, when that slave rebellion against the French, um, the Haitians took off the mountains, and uh, and they lived up the mountains, and they just didn't have the guns and the artillery um, to fight face to face against the French. And, uh, and then uh, the French would try to go up in the mountains, but they just, it, the, the, the armed soldiers back in the uh, late 1700s, it just wasn't the place for them with their heavy, you know, uh, 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 everything. And, and, it, and it didn't go well. And eventually the slaves just kept on attacking and attacking and attacking because they didn't get rid of, they didn't destroy the rebellion. They just uh, moved to a different spot and into pockets. And, uh, and it could be a dangerous thing. 
um, to do that. So Joshua sets the boundaries of the tribes. We're not going to read all that, but it's chapter 13 through 21. It just tells um, where this tribe was, where that tribe was, and where they settled, and, uh, and all the places where they were going to be. And that's all given to them. Um, they did not drive out all of them. This is, this is going to uh, come back a lot. Um, we're going to, it's going to, you know, kind of the rest of the lesson, we will uh, see this. They didn't drive out all the enemies, but they're supposed to drive out every single one of them. And, uh, the, and, uh, and they didn't drive out all of them. They let many, uh, this, this, well, we can look, let's go to Judges chapter 1. Just forward to Judges 1, it records it, and we'll read it a little later in Joshua also. <clears throat> Judges chapter 1. Um, we will see they didn't drive out everybody. Um, they left some of them. And uh, Joshua, or Judges, sorry, Judges chapter 1 and uh, verse 21. And the children of Benjamin did not drive out the Jebusites that inhabited Jerusalem. Both the, uh, but, but the Jebusites dwell with the children of Benjamin in Jerusalem unto this day. Okay, that is not what was supposed to happen. He says, dry them all out, lest you learn their ways. Now, it wouldn't matter if they drove them out and they left and went to a different region. The fear of God was already in front of them. Uh, they were free to leave. They are free to flee the country. They didn't have to slaughter all them. Um, but uh, they were not to allow any of them to remain because he warned them, you will learn their ways. And it won't be a good thing. And, uh, and they left them. Uh, there and uh, that's not necessarily a good thing uh, that they did that and uh, and so we see it uh, uh, there in uh, chapter 2 uh, and uh, uh, or in, uh, we see that in, in there in chapter 1 of uh, Joshua and then uh, verse uh, 27 and uh, it says neither did Manasseh drive out the inhabitants of uh, Beth Shehan um, and their and their towns, uh, nor um, Tatak, nor her towns, nor the inhabitants of Dor and her towns, nor the inhabitants. It's just going to go on and on. It's going to keep on naming the cities. They didn't drive all these people there, and they didn't drive that them out. Verse twenty nine. Neither did Ephraim drive out the Canaanites that dwell in Gezer, but the Canaanites dwelt in Gezer according uh, among them. That's not good. Neither did Zebulon drive out the inhabitants of... Uh, look, we're going to keep on reading this. All the way through the end of the chapter. It just keeps on. Uh, verse 33, neither did Naphtali drive out. That's not good. <laughs> okay. And it keeps the inhabitants... Uh, 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 the inhabitants of uh, Beth Shemath. And Beth Shemath and, uh, became a tribute unto them. And uh, the Am- Amorites forced the children... Uh, of Dan into the mountains, for they would not suffer them to come down to the valley. And so they would dwell there, and they continued to do that. So we see that they didn't, the tribes individually did not drive everybody out. Joshua and the army came to the nation, and they, they destroyed the big cities, they conquered their enemies, and then uh, some of the tribes in their areas didn't finish. There were still people there. They were still there. And they said, you know what? You're, you're not going to rise back up against us. They, you know what? We can let you guys stay. And you know what? As long as you agree not to fight with us, that's not what they're supposed to do. God had told them, don't leave anybody. They, you will learn their ways. They will be a problem to you forever. It will not be good. And, uh, and this led to so many problems. Uh, let's go back to uh, uh, chapter 25. And uh, let's go, uh, Judge, Joshua, sorry, jo- Joshua chapter 25, uh, 23, Joshua 23. This leads to a lot of problems. Joshua 23, and let's go uh, to verse uh, 20, uh, 20, we're going to do uh, Joshua 23 and verse 13. Joshua 23 and uh, verse 13. Know for certain that the Lord your God uh, will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you and scourges in your sides and thorns in your eyes until you perish from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. Man, this is not good. It says, look, God's not going to drive them out anymore. 
I, 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 he worked in front of you. He sent the hornets. He sent, he, he sent your, the fear of you upon them. He went and made the walls of Jericho weak. He made your inhabitants worn down. He discomforted them. He made them sick. He did everything so you could go and beat them and defeat them and dry them out. And God said, okay, I did it. You didn't finish the job. And now they're just going to hound you and become thorns in your sides. You're going David's going to be battling them. Saul's going to be battling them. They're going to come and conquer you sometimes. You're, it's going to be for, for generations. You're, and you're going to learn their ways. You're going to end up uh, becoming idolaters. You're going to be sacrificing your children to, to, to false gods because you're going to learn their ways. It is a problem. And God's not going to drive them out. He gave you the chance. He did the work. You just said, okay, we've done enough. It's okay now. And, and that's, that's a problem. Judges, let's go to Judges now, and uh, chapter 2, and verse 3. Wherefore I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be thorns in your sides, and their gods shall be a snare unto you. Man, this is, is getting to be a, a real mess. Let's go down to uh, verse 11. It says, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. They wouldn't have done that if they didn't know who Balaam was, if they weren't taught from the Canaanites. And by the way, Baal's going to be a snare to them. I mean, Elijah's going to deal with it. It's it's just going to keep on going and going and going. It's going to be a reason God punished, uh, punished them. Verse 12, and they forsook the Lord God of their fathers and sought them out. Uh, and sought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods, of the gods of the people that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he delivered them into the, into the hands of their spoilers and spoiled them. And he <clears throat> sold them into the hands of their enemies round about. So they could not any longer stand before their enemies. Wow. This is not good. This is a bad thing, as we've said many times. <clears throat> God had given them the victory. God had given them the opportunity. But now they would have many problems in the future. We see that's a problem. While the Lord is helping you conquer all your enemies, that's your sins and your weaknesses. If you leave them, they may continue to trouble you the rest of your life. You know, this is, the, this is the thing I've seen in the Christian life, um, <clears throat> is God does the first work, okay? You, oftentimes, when you're a new convert, or when God just, maybe you grew up in church, and all of a sudden, you really, God got a hold of your heart, and you started growing and being on fire for God, and stuff you've had your whole life, you started conquering, and it seems like you're just going, making progress, overcoming, and, and maybe you thought at the time it was so slow, but you look back at it and said, man, we were, we were growing and thriving, and things were happening in our life. I found that that is the time right then to get everything. Take out every enemy. Don't leave anything. Okay? Because if you leave something, I don't know why. I couldn't explain it. But you'll be fighting it the rest of your life. I, I experienced this in my life. I mean, I, there were things when, when, when I was a, a new Christian. I mean, it was, it was a hot knife through butter. It was, we were just, we were just going, we were growing, we were conquering, overcoming those things. And uh, I am so thankful of all those things. And all those things I got rid of really don't hound me anymore. They just, they're just in my past. I think though, and I know that, in fact, in fact I just know this. I know if I brought some of those things back, if I allowed them, I think I'd struggle with them from then on. It's amazing. It's amazing the things that I desire. It's amazing habits that I had, things that I'd overcome. I just, it just, God just helped me overcome them. But, and they're not a hounding thing. And, 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 but then I've watched and, and seen and experienced that when someone goes and they say, okay, but this here, this is, you know, this is my, I've come so far. I'm doing good. I'm just kidding. We'll get that later. And later, 
you try to knock it out and you push it a little ways and it's back again. And you push it out and you overcome it and you memorize the verses and you do all the things and, and it comes back again. You ever notice God took the tablets and he carved in with a finger of God, it says. He carved the Ten Commandments on stone tablets. Moses carried them down. Moses came down, saw the children of Israel committing all the, all the wickedness, <clears throat> threw them down and broke them. Then Moses goes back up in the mount, and God says, they still need the Ten Commandments. He says, go who you out some stones. I made the stones the first time. You didn't have to do anything. Now you go hew them out this time. I'll give you the one miracle. Now you got to work. And a lot of times in your life, you will find God will give you one miraculous deliverance. And if you're foolish enough to undo and destroy that thing, Look, now you got to work. God pushed you up the mountain. You decided to roll back down the mountain. God said, okay, go back up the mountain. You say, uh, aren't you going to push me up? He says, no. Go ahead and climb. You can climb. I'll, I'll make sure you have enough strength to make it to the top. But you got to climb it this time. It's harder. And, and then you're like, man, it's, it's so easy to roll down the mountain now. It is now. Yeah, you, you, yeah, yeah, you did that. And, and no, now, uh, encouragement is all the time, uh, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. God will help you fight. Look, whenever God was with Israel, they destroyed the Canaanites and knocked them back and conquered them. David did it. A lot of people did it. Uh, and they conquered, they beat the Philistines. And every time God wasn't with them, they didn't do it. However, they could have not had the problem at all. <laughs> They could have just had a clear land. And when God's working, and by the way, sometimes I see people, Christians, all of a sudden, they come back to God later in life, or they, they start growing and get on fire for God when they had that period at the start, and they get it again, and then they start, the same blessing comes upon them, and they can push everything out. Do it. Just, get, just, just, just keep on going. Let us move on to perfection. Okay? Uh, and, and, and don't allow things to stay. They hound you. It's not a good thing. They were much easier to conquer. And he says, I will no more drive out the inhabitants of this land. It'll just be a battle. If you're tougher than them, you're tougher than them. But I'm not going to drive them out. I, I sent, I was stinging with hornets. I was making them sick. I was sending an angel in front of you. I put a fear on them. They were deathly afraid of you. Now, they're going to be men that are looking at you in the eye and saying this fight. You should have you should have got rid of every one of them. And you learn the ways of the heathen. The Bible commands you, learn not the way of the heathen. Be simple concerning evil. Look, if you do not know, how many of you, how many of you tempted to worship Baal? You don't even know how. And that's a good thing. Right? If I just went crazy and I decided I'm gonna go smoke crack tomorrow, I don't know how. There's multiple steps in between, fortunately, right? Okay, and and so I don't even know where to buy it, how to get it. I mean, I'm sure I can find it pretty easy right in this neighborhood. Um, but uh, but <clears throat> but look, I'm not right there on the edge of the cliff. I'm. It's once you know stuff, it's really easy to do stuff, and that's what the Bible says: be simple concerning evil. And 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 so don't. You don't need to know, learn all the way of the heathen. And they didn't need those people there to show them, hey, look at our, look, this God we worship, look at this. This God over here. And they learned it. And then all of a sudden, in a moment of rebellion, in a moment of desperation, maybe God wasn't answering their prayers for a minute to test them. I was like, well, let's try this God. You shouldn't have had it next to you. Should your neighbor, you should have a neighbor with a false God right there you could learn about. But they left it there. Um. Israel finishes conquering the land and most of the enemies. Now notice, I want you to notice the way it phrased it there. It said, neither did uh, Naphtali conquer. Neither did Benjamin conquer. It didn't blame it on Joshua. It said Joshua did everything he's supposed to do. Joshua went and they conquered and they won. But when the tribes went there, they did not push the remnants out. It said they just dwelled with them in Jerusalem. No, you, it's very difficult for a moving army that's moving through to get everybody. 
And then what to happen is then they would they would move because they're fighting as, as an army. They would go throughout the land and conquer and conquer and conquer. Well, you know, when they moved on, people came back. So, yes, but the, most of them are gone. Just finish up the, the remnants. Push them out. And, uh, but they didn't. Number two, on the blessings in the battle of Caleb. Let's go to Judges chapter 14. We spent a lot of time on that. And uh, so I guess we need it. And uh, let's see. Um, chapter 14. How many remember that time in your life where, I mean, it was just time to conquer? How many remember that, a time in your life like that? It was just time to conquer where you, just, you were just going and growing and thriving and, and all that stuff. It's good. And uh, that's, a, that's a blessing. Uh, Joshua, um, chapter 14, the blessing and the battles of Caleb. It's pretty cool. Caleb um, is, uh, is we got to remember, he was the guy who, with Joshua, were the two who said, let's go in and conquer the land. We can do this. And everybody else said, no, there's giants and walled cities and enemies, and it's a horrible land, and everything's bad, and we can't do it. We're, we're, the, we're like grasshoppers to them. They're going to conquer us. They're going to kill us. And Joshua and Caleb said, no, the Lord will help us. So now Caleb's in the land. And, 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 and it had both regions, and then it had divisions inside the, of, of families. The families got this division inside the, the region in their, in their area. And so it came time for Caleb's family. And, uh, and uh, it's really cool um, in, in Joshua. <clears throat> in chapter 14, we read about Caleb and all his uh, uh, victories and all that uh, uh, God let him do. And, and, and you can read all of it if you want to, starting in verse 6. Um, and then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gogal, and Caleb, the son of Jep- Jep- uh, Jephthah, uh, the Canaanite, uh, said, unto, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spout the land, and I brought him word again uh, as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly follow the Lord my God. And Moses swear uh, on that day, saying, Surely the land wherein thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord thy God. Caleb says, Hey guys, remember this Joshua? Remember? You and me. Long time ago, I've been, I had to wander around for 40 years with these people. When I was one of faith. All right. And I had to do that. And uh, it's time for me to get my inheritance. I love when God promises Joshua this back in Numbers. And you can go back there in Numbers 13. God's so impressed with Joshua and Caleb. He said, the rest of you will not see this land. Millions of people um, will not go in, get to go in the promised land. And by the way, the promised land in the Bible is a picture of the victorious Christian life. And how few get to go into that and and see that and you can read about that in hebrews 3 and 4 but numbers uh, chapter 13 and uh and verse 30 caleb still the people before moses and said let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it that was the faith that he showed in chapter 14 and uh, verse 23 um chapter 14 and verse 23 it says surely they shall not see the land which i swear unto their fathers neither shall any of them uh, uh, that provoked me, see it, but my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit in him and hath followed me fully, him will I bring into the land uh, uh, where he went, and his seed shall possess it. So, Caleb gets the land, and he's in there, he's been going around, he's been helping everybody conquer, and now it's time for Caleb to get his land that he wants. I love in chapter 14 and verse 8, we'll actually talk about this in Sunday uh, morning's message at 11 a.m., but it says, in verse 80, holy, I wholly followed the Lord my God. It just said that in Numbers. It's going to say this, um, I think, four times in Scripture, that Caleb followed the Lord holy. What a phrase. How few people can say that. I mean, God could call you to anywhere in the world. You, you followed God's will and who you married. You followed the Lord holy when, when he told you where to go to church. You followed him when he, when, he, when he led you to witness that person. I mean, you just said, Lord, I'm yours and here I am. And anything you want, I'm all in. He followed the Lord holy. What a great, what a great life and what a thing God acknowledges there in, in verse 8. 
I like that he claimed his promise. In verse 9, he said, And Moses swore uh, 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 on that day, saying, Surely the land wherein thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord uh, um, the, uh, my God. And he says, Look, this is my promise. And he says, uh, I'm here to get this. God had preserved him to be strong, um, to overcome his enemies, to inherit the land. Look, Here's the sad thing. Here's Caleb, and he's 40 years old when he becomes a spy, right? He gets the news, hey, you got to wander around 40 years until all these people die off. He's like, I'm going to be 80 when I get there into that nice land. This is miserable. Goodness. Four, and he's like walking around going, would you people die off? And, uh, and, and, and for 40 years, he has to wonder, he's thinking, you know, well, remember, life expectancy, you know, in history was very short. But look what God did for him. And this is the goodness of God, is God can always meet your needs. And God can always take care of you. And, uh, and look what he says in verse 10. He says, Behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he, as he said, these forty uh, and five years, including the conquering time and everything else. Even since the Lord spake the word to Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old, I'm 85, and yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go in and come out. He said, look, I'm still as strong as I ever was. Isn't that amazing that God can... Remember, remember Sunday night? God can give you back the years. All right? God, he says, hey, God, preserve me, man. I am still as strong as when I was 40, and that's awesome. Now I'm ready to go. Let's go conquer. I'm ready to fight. Let's go get my enemies. I'm, I, I want my land. I want, and he, and he picks where he wants, and, and he says, I want that. And there's some enemies there. I'm ready to go. Can I go? Because I'm ready to go. And I want to tell you, that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And I've often thought, <clears throat> because, you know, I enjoy amazing health, um, and I've absolutely abused my body, not with sin, but with God's will. Um, I mean with um, not sleeping and going a million miles per hour and going to dangerous things and bouncing myself and all kinds of uh all kinds of things and eating all kinds of crazy things. And I've just been going, 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 and, 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 and and God's preserved my health. I was, I was telling my daughters, they were talking about, about you know, are you, are you slowing down on the mission ship? I said, there's nothing a 30-year-old can do that I can't do. And, that, and, and you know what my workout plan is? Curls for hamburgers. Uh, I do not have time to work out. I'm, I move fast. I'm busy. I'm always going. But I don't have time to work out. I don't have life energy to work out. Um, I just, I, I, I'm, I'm, but by God's grace, he just, he's preserved my health. And the question would be, is why does, why should God give you good health? What are you using it for? And maybe, and by the way, God has a perfect right for my health to be, start being horrible tomorrow. He can do whatever he wants with my health. Okay, and I'm not saying, and I, I'm joking. I, I I don't abuse my body. I do some. Th I do what I can. I t I take proper nutrients, and 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 I I don't I don't abuse my body in, in a lot of ways that other people do. The American Americans do. Okay, but I'm still I'm saying God God doesn't have to do that. But why does God need need to give you good health? For what? For your pride? So you stand in front of a mirror and flex? Uh, I need good health because I need to be able to go out in the jungles and spend a couple days out there in the heat and preach five times when it's 90-90. 90 degrees, 90% humidity. <laughs> okay? I need to be able to do that. And so I am not. I am saying that he, he, God can do that. God can give you whatever you need, and the devil can't rob you. And even if God puts delays in your life, understand God can give you back the lost years because they aren't really lost. And he says, let's go in. Let's conquer. Let's go in. I want that. And I love what he does. He says, you know what? I want a certain area, and it's not the easy area. 
He's ready to go. And, uh, and he says, I, I am as strong as I was back then. And uh, you know what he says? He says, I want the hard area. I want the difficult area. I've got an area I want. And let's look at chapter uh, 15. I like what it says. And, uh, and uh, uh, there's a couple of verses I want to read here. And uh, <clears throat> I lost one of the verses here I wanted to read. It says, uh, a number, uh, let, me, let me read the one in, in chapter 15 and verse 14. <clears throat> um, it says this, it says, And Caleb drove thence three sons of Anak. It mentions their name there. Three sons of Anak. Just, you know, what, who are the sons of Anak? Giants. Goliath was the son of Anak. He said, I want that mountain. There was a mountain where the giants were. And he says, I want that one. I love it. Open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. I cannot believe the amount of Christians who do not have a, a great desire to see great things from God. And they just want the easy path. They want to pick the low fruit. Let me eat the sour apples because the ones up high, it's kind of risky. But that's where the good ones are. Because everybody already picked the low ones. I want that mountain. And he goes up and, and, he, and he chooses that. And, and he gets that mountain that God gave him. And, 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 and that's a wonderful, wonderful thing that he had that desire. And that's where he went and that's what he got. I'm so glad that, that uh, he gives us that example. And uh, he followed the Lord. He conquered the giants that he saw before. Back in Numbers 13. And he wasn't afraid of them. Because he knew God can do that. Lastly, i got to finish up. Is Joshua challenges the tribes who have not conquered to not slack off. And let's go to chapter 17. i got to finish really quickly. We're going we're gonna to have this in several passages in chapter 17. And uh, forward. Um, chapter 17 and... Uh, Verse 14, And the children of Joseph spake unto Joshua, saying, Why hast thou given <clears throat> um, uh, uh, given uh, me but one lot and one portion to inherit, seeing I am a great people, for as much as the Lord has blessed me hitherto? He says, Why have you only given me one, one lot here? We're, we have a lot of people, the children of Joseph said. I, I, it's very funny to me. I love what, uh, what, what he says there. In verse 15, Joshua said, answered and said, If thou be a great people, then get thee up. Go into the wood country and cut down for thyself there in the land of the Perizzites and the, and the giants, if Mount Ephraim be too narrow for thee. He says, look, if you're a great people, you got a lot of people, go conquer. There's lots of land around us. And, and there the mountains. We, haven't, we didn't do the mountains. Go up there and take the land of the mountains. There's a lot of places you could go. There's a lot of places you get victory uh, there. In chapter 18, uh, the whole congregation uh, 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 of the children of Israel assembled together into Shiloh and set up the tabernacle of the congregation there, and the land was subdued before them. And there remained among the children of Israel seven tribes which had not yet received their inheritance. So, remember, they, they all went together as an army, they pushed through, and now seven tribes of the twelve, five of them had taken their land already, but, but the other seven had not taken their land, and now they all gathered together, and Joshua says, hey guys, go get your land. We conquered your enemies. Now go push everything out, finish it up, and go inherit it. It's all sitting there for you. And Joshua said to the children of Israel, how long are you slack to go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers uh, hath given you? Just go get it. A couple of things that they that, that we see here. He says, "Look, go send some people from your tribes and scout out the land and and decide where where you want to live and what the borders are and everything and and then and then go into these lands. You've already been through it, but now go there and do this. It's theirs to get. It's theirs. It's done. You just got to take it." And that's the victory we have in Christ. But, you know, a lot of people do two things here. Is one is one they get addicted to strong leadership. And Joshua had to be a strong leader. And so now they've conquered all of them. They've been told by Moses. They've been told this whole time. And now they're, 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 they're going and somebody tries to inherit and they say, what do we do now? We 
go get your land. Why are you being slack on this? Well, Joshua, aren't you going to take us there? No. We already, we already did this thing. You're not a baby. And as a Christian, I can't there and, and come in your house and say, hey, hey, come here. Sit down. I can't make you read your Bible. Look, you should win souls. You should preach the gospel of Jesus Christ because God told you to. I can have a soul winning time. I can give you tracks. I can get, put you in a place. But if you don't want to go, I mean, ultimately, I have no authority to force you. You got to want to. You got to want to pray. The, the victorious Christian life is yours. I can't take you to it. I can just make the way clear. Now, go in and possess your land. You're more than conquerors. The him that loved us. Proverbs 21, 25, the desire of the slothful killeth him because his hands refuse to labor. If you want the victorious Christian life, you could have it. The land is subdued. Continue to go and finish it up. The other tribes already got their land. Quit coveting. Oh, those tribes are just lucky. No. They've taken what's been given to them. And we have been given victory through Jesus Christ. Go get it. And don't be slack about it. Quit thinking about it. Quit procrastinating. You know you could, you could do great things. You know you could have victory. You know God has given you strength. You have the Holy Spirit. You have the Word of God. You have the power of God. You have the promises of God. Go get it. Leadership can only lead you so far. God can only open up the land so much. You have to do something. Okay? And, and so you've got to go in and don't be slack. Because if you want to be a victorious Christian, you can be. And, and I marvel at it. We'll see someone uh, start serving God and getting victory and life be transformed. And then it gets hard. The devil starts hitting back because they started making progress. And they stop doing the things. What are you doing? It's hard. I got really busy. I don't want to go to church. But I, I really want to serve the Lord, though. Let me guess, you're not reading the Bible either. Well, you know, I'm really busy. If you're not going to do the things that you need to do, then don't expect to get where you want to get. I want to go see Yellowstone. All right. Awesome. Do it. I do. I want to go to Yellowstone. All right. How do you want to go there? Well, I'd like to drive there. Okay, go. Well, I have to get gas in my car. I have to probably get the oil changed. Probably have to dash the days off work. Okay. So do it. Well, I really want to go to Yellowstone, but I don't want to do all those things. That's, that's the way a lot of people live in life. And I'm always like, and the only way that the devil makes you happy there is by telling you, but someday you will. And so you don't go into your promised land. And, but you think about it. Someday, man, those parasites, I'm taking their land. Go. <laughs> Times are burning. You'd be surprised how fast life goes. The number one point when people, I've, I've seen people in life when they say, goodness, where did life go? 30. Like, I was just a teenager. I cannot believe I'm 30. Yep, you're 30. And you're still dinking around saying, why is... I got to figure out what to do. You're 30. Do something. Get going. Life's out there. And serving God, you got to do some stuff. But you can. God will help you. But how long slack you to go and possess your land? What do we do, Joshua? Go get your land. We already conquered all your enemies. There's just a few scattered ones here and there. Go in and get it. And, and, and so we had to push them to do that. And so let's make sure we're not like that. All right, we got to finish. Lord, thank you for the Bible. Thank you for all it teaches us. There's good lessons here about the promised land of victory. Good lessons, Lord, we can learn in our lives about uh, uh, just uh, finishing our enemies and about uh, not being slack, about going after that mountain like Caleb did and fighting the giants when he's 85. Thank you, Lord, for these things in the Bible. Use this in our lives and help us to uh, uh, be more than conquerors and show that you're still working in lives. And thank you that you still do great things. We pray you'd help us in Jesus' name. Amen. We got to dismiss you. Service is coming up.